Thanks, Villa. My name is Matsi, and I'm an entrepreneur and an entrepreneurship activist. But before I start my presentation, I'd like to play a slight video that will give you context to what I'm going to talk about today. Modisa, an industry association, <laughs> beginning with the end in mind because that's my last um, clip that will be playing as I wrap up my presentation. So that's uh, essentially Simodisa, an industry association for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And essentially today I'm going to talk about entrepreneurial ecosystems and building entrepreneurial ecosystems. I'm going to unpack what it is. I'm going to give you a sense of what is the entrepreneurship space in South Africa looking like? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? And why should South Africa get it right? So entrepreneurs, who are these people? It's fine. Oh. Uh, right. Yeah, it's right. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. Sorry, you can read. <laughs> so who are these people? Who are these innovators? Who are these disruptors? Who are these people that are always taking risks? Who are these people that dare to dream? And we believe that entrepreneurs are the people that are going to change this country. Entrepreneurs are the current and they're the future frontier for this country. We need job creators and not job seekers. And entrepreneurs are those people that create that change in our country. So as I, ha I introduce myself, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a business called Furaha and essentially we focus on industrial training. And I'm also an entrepreneurship activist because I run an organization called Simodisa. Simodisa was started uh, by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, and essentially the journey for, from Simodisa was about how do you create an enabling system. I'll tell you more about Simodisa, but before I go into that, I'll talk about my own personal journey. So like I'm sure everybody that's sitting here, some of you might be entrepreneurs after working hours, I used to be an investment banker. That's what I studied. That's what I had ambitions to do. I started off at Investec, but my journey within investment banking lasted about two years. That's 
that was long enough for me to figure out that I'm not cut for this mold. It was long enough for me to figure out that, well, I'm constantly asking the wrong kind of questions with this, within this environment. I'm constantly wanting to change the form. I'm constantly wanting more for my life. And there's a deeper and inner passion that wants to come out. My journey with, as an investment banker was very, very fruitful because now in retrospect, I can look back and see how those networks have actually helped me progress within my own personal business. And I also learned how to engage with clients. I, I also had the opportunity to learn how to actually create a, an, an institution. So that was not time wasted. It was necessary practice. And for any ambitious or inspiring entrepreneurs, I'd always encourage them to, perhaps if you have an opportunity, to start off within a corporate environment because it does give you solid and good foundations. It, it's always about what you make out of it. So I always reflect on the day when I decided that Screw this, I'm done, I have to leave. I have to go pursue my dream, I have to go find something that I'm passionate about. I had no idea where I was going. I probably only had about three months worth of savings. And I thought, well, the thought of staying within this environment is actually much more frightening than the thought of going into the unknown. And seven years later, I can reflect back and say, well, it actually didn't work out too badly. I did take that leap of faith, I did jump, and I did not sink. Instead, it was a journey of learning how to Go down, figure yourself out, and then you'll come up. Many do make that journey, and many don't make that journey. And your ability to rise up above the challenges, rise up above the opportunities, is your thick skin, your ability to endure challenges, your ability to see things as opportunities, and your ability to see risk differently. So as an investment banker, you know, people will not invest in myself because I'm probably the highest risk ever. So entrepreneurs are always complaining about banks never fund us because we're very, very risky. And one thing that is clear is that entrepreneurs are those people that see opportunities out of nothing. So of course they will not expect for you to see what it is that they're talking about until it's been created. If entrepreneurs did not thrive, we wouldn't have the Ubers, we wouldn't have the Facebooks, we wouldn't have the Airbnbs, we wouldn't have the Yokos. Those are some of the innovations coming out of South Africa that are changing how payments are done. These are some of the innovations in our country that one day might make these banks that we used to come out of obsolete because they are changing how things are done. Everything is digital. There's no more brick and mortar. And we have entered the fourth industrial revolution. And it's how do we digitize systems? So entrepreneurship, my journey was very, very enlightening. I'm very, very happy to say that seven years into it, I have had to figure out how do I put bread on my own table. I've had to figure out how am I going to empower other entrepreneurs or other people within my organization? How am I going to enable other people to take their children to school? That has been my problem. It hasn't been a problem of anybody else. So the security that everybody talks about in corporate, security that everybody talks about um, in working for an, a corporate environment doesn't exist because right now everybody's trying to get rid of you. Everybody's going digital. Jobs are being shared. I mean, South Africa is one of the highest levels of unemployment. It means that we need more entrepreneurs to create those job opportunities. And we need more young people to see entrepreneurship as an option to life, as an option to providing for themselves. I like talking to audiences that are not entrepreneurs because they're probably like staring at me saying, well, it's interesting that you mentioned that, but you're very much comfortable in your own world. And I always tell aspiring entrepreneurs that are working in corporate environments that there's a place for everybody and entrepreneurship is not for everybody. And essentially, if the bank is going to call you because we don't get paid on the 25th of every month, unfortunately not. Sometimes money comes in and it's a lot of money and sometimes money doesn't come and you left not knowing how you're going to provide for yourself for a good three months. So you have to be able to take those risks. You have to be very practical and realistic about how much can you actually endure. When the bank manager calls you and says, hi, Matsi, you haven't paid your car, it's now four months, and if you don't deposit 8,000 rands, uh, we're going to take your car. Uh, you have to think on your toes, and you have to pluck up the guts and have a thick skin to tell them, listen, I'm in business, it's tough right now, I'm going to get paid, I've done work, I haven't been paid for a good month from a client, because that always happens, and you just have to bear with me, because in two weeks' time, I'll make a plan you would be very surprised at how receptive they are because they understand that you are trying to build your own business and also you're going to make a plan. As an entrepreneur, essentially, that is what it's all about. So 
My journey has been very interesting. Um, I've lost a lot, not of weight, because a lot of people that see me uh, from when I was younger to now, I have lost some weight. But I've also lost um, uh, friends, you know, people that didn't understand me, people that didn't understand my journey. People when I tell them, listen, I'm sorry, I can't come to your birthday because I can't afford to buy you a gift or I can't afford to pay for the lunch, you'll have to excuse me. Those kind of people didn't necessarily understand that journey and those are the kind of people that you had to let go. And now the people that I surround myself with because they say it gets colder, the upper you go up the mountain, it gets, it's get, it gets colder and it gets lonelier. And that is true for a journey of an entrepreneur. You lose a lot, you lose a lot of faith, but there has to be something inside that keeps you going. There has to be something inside that makes you wake up in the morning. I'm one person that doesn't have a proper sleeping pattern because I tend to wake up in the middle of the night. I feel like, okay, I should have submitted that proposal. Okay, I forgot to submit that, that invoice. Oh, wow, this, this opportunity is really, really getting my mind thinking. So we are essentially the people that not a lot of people would understand, but we are essentially what South Africa needs. So right, right now, I run my business, Furaha. Um, it's taken a while for it to actually grow. Uh, we've got some corporate clients. We also be, have been able to um, have a, a joint venture partnership with a listed company, and now we're working together with them. So that's Furaha, and then essentially I run Simodisa, which is what I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about because it's an industry association for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. But just to give you a bit of a scene of what is entrepreneurship looking like, um, you know, there are the highest levels of unemployment. You know, South Africa is a beautiful country. It has a lot to offer. We have natural resources, we have human resources, but we still have high levels of unemployment. Um, that's very, very concerning for a country that is so rich with opportunities. Also, looking at a high start of failure rate, you know, it is a natural or globally known fact that, you know, startups do fail but it means that we are not necessarily nurturing our startups to be able to take advantage of what South Africa currently has to offer. And then emerging entrepreneurial uh, culture, a lot of people, like I had indicated earlier, didn't understand why I would choose to leave a very comfortable investment banking job to go back home, figure myself out, figure out what it is that I wanna do, which is in the rural free state, by the way, it's not another city like Johannesburg. Go back home and figure out what I wanna do. And a lot of people, including my own father, would always question, but why would you leave that job, Matsi? Why South Africa just doesn't have that culture of embracing entrepreneurs. If you do have children that see things differently, that always dream up ideas, always wiggle their way into and out of situations, you should watch out for that and should always encourage them to think differently because entrepreneurs are people that do things differently. And so if we could only encourage failure in South Africa, because as an entrepreneur, you will fail. So we always say fail fast, fail often, and fail forward. Part of success is failing. The more you fail, the more you learn. And if you had to speak to investors, they would appreciate the fact that you have failed and you've been able to iterate your idea. You've been able to pivot your idea. And so the chances of me actually investing in you are probably better now at your 10th failure. So be proud of telling them how you failed and also how you've been able to pick yourself up. And also be proud of those who you see around you that are trying something out but they failed. Encourage them to keep failing, to keep pushing on forward and to you know, pick themselves up. And then emerging rate of innovation in South Africa. It's emerging because South Africa is quite a, an innovative country. I mean, one of the, the biggest innovators globally, Elon Musk, came from South Africa. We've had the Mark Shuttleworths, uh, the Creepy Crawlies, the CAT scans. These are innovations that have really come out of South Africa. But we're not very good at promoting ourselves as the innovative hub of the continent. Current uh, innovations, um, we've had very, very good um, innovations and disruptions that have come out of South Africa. Yoko, I've made an example. It's a payment platform that will probably make the banking system obsolete at some point in time. We have uh, Ikubu, uh, which is a company that was started by Franz Stuvich a young chap from Stellenbosch, and essentially his company was bought out by Garmin by the age of 32. And then we also have Fundamo, which, is, um, what, which was bought out by Visa. So South Africa has everybody watching globally. Uh, we call ourselves the biggest incubator for global uh, buyouts because essentially we have some great innovations that are coming out of South Africa. But we need to start ensuring that innovation is not a buzzword. We need to ensure that SIPO from Soweto is going to create some of Africa's best innovations to have global solutions. 
we need to start getting innovation at the grassroots level in South Africa. And up until then, you know, that number will still be 54. That is the global um, innovation index, um, uh, the current global innovation index. Out of 128 countries, we were uh, ranked 54. So obviously our mission is to ensure that that number does become South Africa being one of the top 10 innovative countries because we already have a lot to show as a country. Growing up, um, growing but fragmented ecosystem, there's a lot of initiatives. You know, there's a lot of money for entrepreneurs. There's a lot of enterprise and supply development initiatives. There's a lot of incubators, accelerators. However, everybody is not working as a collective. And that is why it's very, very difficult for us to identify South Africa as a premium ecosystem. Um, Two years ago, there was the global startup ecosystem, and it had top 20 entrepreneurial ecosystem. Of course, Silicon Valley was the first. Tel Aviv was also in the top five, New York, Chicago, and London. However, South Africa, any country or any city um, in, 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 on the African continent was not necessarily featured. So the good news is, in this year's current uh, global startup um, uh, ecosystem, South Africa, well, De uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town was featured in that particular report. And it's because of the work that Simodisa, Ellen Gray Orbis Foundation did, because we said, well, we have a lot to offer entrepreneurs. And it's time that the world starts to see what we are and what we do as an ecosystem. And then low-skilled labor force. We believe that we need to start educating young people and giving them skills of the future. Science, technology, engineering, um, mathematics is very, very important. Young kids from rural areas should know how to code. Young kids should be able how to build their own, their own apps. That is where the world is going. And this is something that we're constantly saying that the government has to listen to because we have to equip our young people with skills of their future. We have to give them that ammunition so that they come out guns blazing. By the time they, they're grown up, the world is just waiting for them because we have given them the necessary skills that they require. What we have to offer is a lot. I mean, we have world-class incubators, we have world-class accelerators, the race corps, um, the endeavors, the SW17s. Um, incubation is very, very critical. If you have an idea and you want somebody to help mold your idea, Getting into a very good incubation program is very, very critical. Um, there's lots of incubators in South Africa. If you had to Google um, how many incubators we have in your city, in, in your province, there's a lot that's going. And essentially, we always encourage entrepreneurs because when you're starting up, you don't know where to go. And being in an incubator or accelerator is very, very important because those people have traveled that journey. The mentors that are around within that environment, they have started businesses, they failed in businesses. They would know how to help you when it comes to certain challenges in your business. Funding institutions, there's no shortage of funding in South Africa. I tell this to entrepreneurs and they give me a blank stare because they're like, well, I'm here, I have an idea, and I've been struggling to get funding. What's important is to understand at what point can you access funding in South Africa? We have development funding institutions, we have alternative funding institutions, but it's very, very important for entrepreneurs to understand that not a lot of people will give you money until you've been able to show that you've actually invested time, you've invested some of your own money, and also you've been able to have some form of track record. So that's why we believe in the whole lean startup, which is essentially if you want to sell an apple, don't write a business plan about selling an apple. If you want to sell an apple, go out and sell. Why should you apply for funding to sell apples? Perhaps ask your family, fools or friends to give you that 100 bucks to actually buy a bag of apples and then sell. So it's important that you understand that how investment bankers think or the people that you approach for funding, they want to see that you have put some skin in the game. So there is no uh, you know, shortage of, of money in South Africa. All the money is running after the few uh, good ideas. Um, you know, People that are in funding institutions will tell you that, well, right now our challenge is that we don't have a good lineup or pipeline of investable businesses. So entrepreneurs need to get to a point where they are actually investable, where they understand their business, where they've been able to uh, pivot, where they've failed a couple of times and they've been able to illustrate that, I've tried this out for a very, very long time and now this is the point where I believe that this is something you can invest in because here's my market. Access to funding, I would say, comes second after access to markets, but I'll speak about that at, um, within my next slide. And then enabling infrastructure, South Africa is very, very fortunate as, you know, um, we're quite an advanced country on, on, on the continent. We have a lot to offer entrepreneurs. Any corner, I mean, I was very, very surprised to see that there's Impilo. You know, there's little pockets of 
enabling environments, you know, whether it's working spaces that offer you free Wi-Fi. I'm part of the Innovation Hub, and essentially the Innovation Hub has started an initiative. Um, I mean, the Innovation Hub is, I don't know if you know it, but it's all the way in Pretoria. It's quite a big, you know, Innovation Hub. There's a lot of incubation, acceleration, research and development, but it's a bit of a white elephant because it's just sitting there. So what they've tried to do is now create Innovation Hubs called Ikasi Labs in various townships. Um, within the Gauteng province. And in that way, they've created a, an, an environment where township entrepreneurs that have ideas can sit there the whole day. They have access to computers, access to free internet. They have mentors, they have workshops, they have people coming to talk to them to encourage them. So essentially, South Africa's future lies in our ability to recognize where the majority lies is where we need to go. It's not good that we have all these great initiatives, but in Santon and in Greenside, we have to take it to the people. So such initiatives are very, very important, and it's good to see that South Africa is leaning towards uh, that direction. And in institutions of learning, there's a lot of great institutions in South Africa. Entrepreneurship one-on-one -on -one is one of those we feel that has to be introduced from a formative stage in a, a young person's life. Your ability to, as I indicated earlier, to see entrepreneurship as a, as, as, as a career um, opportunity has to start at your primitive stages of development. You have to know that it is risky, but it's definitely what the world wants. And if you are successful, you can fly high with the greats um, like the, um, the Bill Gates and the various other entrepreneurs that we read about in these magazines. And then world-class research and development. South Africa has great research and development, but our challenge is how do we commercialize that technology? How does it come and sit on your shelves? How does it become a product or a service that you can commercialize on? So there's a lot of work that, has to, that is currently being done around giving incentives and ensuring that you match entrepreneurial thinking, the people, that, the entrepreneurs, and the academics that come up with these ideas because essentially that's how you're going to be able to commercialize those products. <clears throat> and then access to markets, yes. Um, we believe that access to markets comes before access to funding. If you have a product, if you don't have a market, if you don't have anybody that's buying your product, it's very, very difficult for you to call yourself a business person because you're not in business. You've created something that nobody's buying. So your ability to ensure that you can actually sell your product is very, very important. And so public and private sector procurement opportunities, this is also, um, this is an opportunity for um, Exaro as a corporate um, to actually help entrepreneurs opening up your, your, your value chains, opening up your, your, your supply chains, your ability to nurture entrepreneurs, your ability to get them into your supply chains is very, very important. So the more of that we can do, then entrepreneurs would actually have access to markets. And then access to funding, as indicated earlier on, South Africa has a lot of funding, but it's about understanding at what point and what kind of funding am I eligible for. But initially, you essentially have to go out there and do it yourself uh, and bootstrap and ensure that you have put some skin in the game. You have lost a lot, but you have a lot to gain. And then access to social capital. We are a very diverse country. You know, a lot of us didn't come from environments where we had uncles that play golf with the CEO of Investec or, un or aunties that are running big investment banks or, 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 or big corporates. So social capital and mentorship is very, very important. And the, the good thing is that there are a lot of mentors out there that are looking for opportunities to help SMEs. And you're probably wondering, well, I'm a corporate, I'm not necessarily an entrepreneur. How am I going to help an entrepreneur? Well, if you're running a marketing division of a big company, if you are the HR specialist or the HR director, guess what? This is what an entrepreneur has to know. This is something that your knowledge, your ability, your experience might be able to guide them. So there's a role for everybody. You shouldn't feel that because I'm working in a corporate environment, um, there's no ways I can help these entrepreneurs. They're crazy people running around with big ideas, but at some point they need to have their own businesses that will have marketing divisions, that will have HR divisions, and you have a role to play as prospective uh, mentors. And then enabling policy environment, um, well, the journey behind Simodisa was uh, Peter de Villiers. He's the founder of Simodisa, and he's a Cape Town startup. I mean, before you become a big business, you have to be a startup. So like a lot of startups, he, he started his business in Cape Town. Um, and for the past 13 years, he's been able to grow and scale his business globally. You know, his company, Clickatel, is on the African continent, it's in Europe, it's in America. And he lived in Silicon Valley for about 12 years, and only last year did he come back to South Africa. 
But how Simodisa, well, the, the genesis of Simodisa was when a lot of government officials would go to a Silicon Valley and they would ask, well, this is, looks great. You know, we are in the hub of the world where all these disruptions are coming out of. How do we create an environment like this back at home in South Africa? And so Peter and the various other entrepreneurs that have done well in Silicon Valley, like Vinnie Linghams, um, they would say, well, South Africa was unfortunately not an attractive destination for me to achieve what I've achieved which is to grow and scale my business globally. The funding was not sufficient. I mean, there's so much it could take me towards. Um, the policy environment was just not attractive. I'm not able to hire the best talent to come from the world because you know, the business visa situation is tricky. It's rigorous. It's, it's, it makes South Africa very unattractive. So we really need to start an industry association that is going to oversee the policy framework in South Africa. I'll go into a little bit more detail about Simodisa um, later, but essentially we feel that we need to create an enabling environment for entrepreneurs to thrive. We should make it attractive and we should make entrepreneurs grow. And then collaborative ecosystem, I feel that we need to speak with one voice and we need to work as a collaboration. Entrepreneurs right now struggle to find opportunities. Exaro probably has its own supply and enterprise development programs. Um, All Mutual has its own, Investec has its own, but still entrepreneurs are not able to figure out who's who in the zoo, who's here to help me. So we need to start collaborating um, on entrepreneurial ecosystem. And essentially that's where Simodisa comes. We started in uh, 2013. Um, we, have, we are all entrepreneurs, so the people that I work with, they're all entrepreneurs. Peter de Villiers is our chairman, um, and we have various other people within our executive team that have all started their own successful businesses, or they are venture capitalists, or they're people that essentially have started something that is helping entrepreneurs in South Africa. And in 2013, the first thing we did as an organization when we were established was create a framework. It was a white paper. And essentially, this is the Bible. This is what we live by. This framework was a white paper recommendation to the government saying, if you want to nurture high-impact, high-growth entrepreneurs, you essentially have to oversee these particular policy policies that should be um, able to help entrepreneurs. So essentially, we also want to be the golden thread that connects entrepreneurs to opportunities. And our main focus at Simodisa is uh, advocacy lobbying, industry research, promotion of venture capital as an asset class, because as I said, if you're looking for 50,000 rands, 100,000 rands, nobody's actually going to be able to give you money for that. So early stage investment, um, the industry in South Africa, we really don't have a venture capital industry. We don't have a venture capital culture, which is what we would require for our ability to give that guy or that girl 50,000 rands to start their idea, if that's what they uh, necessarily needed. And also we're about unifying our entrepreneurial um, ecosystem. I'll tell you a a little bit about Venture Central, which is going to be launched. And this is going to be our digital home for entrepreneurs, where all the opportunities are in one central point. And if you want to know anything about entrepreneurship, if you want to know anything about where do you access opportunities, it's all there within one digital platform. If you want to register your business, if you want mentorship, if you want access to funding, it's all in one particular platform. That's what CMOD is about. It's about being that golden thread. And so how we categorize our initiatives is amplification programs and also catalyzing programs. Catalyzing programs are those around policy, are those around research, are are those around how do we grow the venture capital industry in South Africa. And it's also about um, having that entrepreneurial portal that I spoke about. And then amplification programs, it's about community building. It's about how do you ensure that entrepreneurs know that there is this community that understands its challenges, that understands its journey. Those people are entrepreneurs themselves, and they are here to help them. So these are the events that we host. We have Vida X, which is um, it's perhaps the biggest startup um, conference in South Africa, because at any point in time, we have different players in the ecosystem assisting you that are there. They're exhibiting. They're giving master classes. We get captains of industries. We get pioneers of, of businesses coming to talk to entrepreneurs. And then we also have Startup Thursdays. Those are very fun, chilled get-togethers every third Thursday of the month. Uh, We host it at AlphaCode, which is a fintech hub, which is essentially where Simodisa is based. And here we would get founders of businesses meeting with funders, and entrepreneurs would essentially get to engage with them. So we've had people like the founders of Ned Flores, Natasha Sideris, the founder of... (coughs) 
excuse me, talk too much, the founder of, um, the founder of uh, Tasha's. We have had venture capitalists. Um, we have had various people. I mean, every month would have a different theme, would have a different topic. Last month, we were discussing mentorship. So we had people from the National Mentorship uh, Program coming through. This month, we'll be discussing the business of coffee. And you realize that even though you're not necessarily in the coffee business, the principles of business are just the same. So you will be able to learn the, you know, the opportunities, the challenges that these entrepreneurs actually had to endure. And there are lots of lessons to be learned. And then we have Venture Train. That's actually quite an exciting initiative from Simodisa. So basically, it's a conference on, on the train. Um, we leave Johannesburg on a Thursday morning, and we go through the Karoo and down to Cape Town. And the idea around Venture Train is connecting the two entrepreneurial hubs in South Africa. And on that particular train, we'll be discussing uh, topics. For example, we've discussed fintech. So we had fintech entrepreneurs, fintech funders, fintech technologists, the Department of Science and Technology, media, and entrepreneurs coming through, and we would have a discussion. And we can probably take about 38 people all at once. So it's a very, very, um, well, you can't run away because you are literally on a train. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very much engaging. And the idea is also to, to connect entrepreneurs to funders. So we always have a good amount of um, venture capitalists on the train. And we would have very constructive um, discussions around how do we change this environment? How do we enable this environment? How do we transform this environment? How do we ensure that anybody in South Africa is able to actually participate in this environment. So that's the venture train for you. Uh, the next one is going to be in August. It's going to be a female themed, female woman on track entrepreneurship uh, venture train. So all the female investment bankers, funders, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, media will be on that particular train. And it's going to be a fun. So anybody that's interested, it's open to everybody. Um, so, it, I mean, people that want to be in business one day, it's also a very good platform for you to come through and get a sense of who are these people, what is it all about, what are the opportunities as well. And then lastly, we have Kasigo Digital. Because everybody is going digital, everybody is already digital, it's about going into township environments and saying to township entrepreneurs, the world is going digital. Don't get left behind. Here are all the free and accessible and affordable digital tools. So instead of manually writing out your accounting statements, uh, your monthly banking statements, you have SMEZ, you have Sage, you have all these digital tools that are very easy for you to use because now we, ha we want to move you to a, to a digital platform. Your payroll is something that you can pay about 79 rands, and all your employees will have you know, payroll systems. So it's about how do you take businesses digitally, ensuring that um, they have a digital presence. So this is just a representation, graphical representation of, um, I feel like my back is towards you. <laughs> this is just a graphical representation of you know, the Leader F Conference, Startup Thursdays, uh, the Venture Train, um, and then policy-wise, I think as much as Simorisa is trying to build a community, uh, what's important and what sets us apart from everybody is that we are not competing. We are not an incubator. We are not an accelerator. We are an industry body that's trying to get everybody to work together. So the policy component of Simodisa is something that's not necessarily seen because you can't touch and feel, but it's something that we essentially do in the background. But it's very, very important because... The reason why Simodisa started was how do we push policy? How do we ensure that the government is able to provide this enabling environment? So we chose seven policies that, and recommendations to the government saying, if you are able to fix this, if you are able to amend this, somehow an entrepreneur would be able to have a better chance at fighting. South Africa would be a much more enabling environment. South Africa would be a much more attractive entrepreneurial destination on the continent. So we looked at IP and exchange control. So your ability to sell your IP has been very, very difficult. You have to go through rigorous tasks. And of the seven policies that we, we were able to um, recommend to the government, two of those have been shifted since we started. So our success would be our ability to you know, achieve all of those um, policy, um, um, you know, uh, uh, shifts from the government. So the IP and exchange control this year in February um, during the budget speech by our former 
uh, Minister of Finance, Praveen Gordon, he actually did announce that they're going to remove some of the restrictions around your ability to sell your IP. And that was a significant stride for those people in the technology industry in South Africa. It was a significant stride for those people who are trying to invest in South African-owned IP because now you don't have to go through rigorous um, exchange control loops that everybody has been going through. And then another um, you know, policy um, area that we've been able to move was a Section 12J tax incentive. Basically what that is, is um, it's a tax incentive for those people that are going to invest in venture capital companies. And our ability to identify to the government saying, you need to give people um, incentives to do something. You need to give people incentives to actually want to invest in startups. It's a highly risky environment, so give them those tax incentives. And since then, we've been able to push Section 12J. Uh, when we started, there were about seven registered uh, Section 12J companies, and now we have 50. And out of those, 20 are actively participating and actively investing in early stage businesses. So for Simodisa, it's a very, very good um, achievement. We haven't done it alone. We work in partnerships. You know, they say you need to hunt in, 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 in crowds. You need to hunt in herds. So we work with the various people within the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Um, and then we also looked at the Vench, 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 Matched Venture Capital Fund. Essentially, venture capital in South Africa is highly risky. Right now, the private sector are the people that are really investing and starting their own venture capital funds. So we believe that to grow the industry, to ensure that there's more money for more entrepreneurs to take advantage of, the government needs to match that. Right now, there is a lot of money that's circulating, but government needs to match what private sector is doing. So we're constantly lobbying around how does the government now invest in venture capital. And then we also looked at labor reforms, our ability to treat SMEs. I mean, you know, in a big company, there's a marketing division, the finance division, um, HR division. As an entrepreneur, you wear all hats. You literally have to do everything. But we don't believe that the same kind of labor uh, regulations that you're treated with has to be the same as a big business. You're an entrepreneur and you know you are being taken to the CCMA left, right and center. We believe that they have to reform it in a way that's quite simple and they're able to give you some kind of leeway because um, you, know, you, you don't have the time to be writing out warning letters and everything like that. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs waste a lot of time in places such as the CCMA. We don't condone bad behavior. We're not saying entrepreneurs need to mistreat people, but we believe that you need to give them a little bit of breathing space so that they can establish themselves. Um, and then business visas, government-funded IP uh, research and development tax incentives, those are some of the policy environments that we've been able to identify as if we get this right as a country, we will be able to actually help entrepreneurs. And so um, our focus right now is open innovation, so corporate's ability to integrate entrepreneurs. Um, instead of request for proposal, we say request for innovation. So allowing entrepreneurs to come in and find solutions for some of your problems. I mean, there are great examples of how a big problem in a corporate was actually solved by a very small lean startup because this is something that they were able to do. This is something that they did and something that they were able to solve for a big corporate. So our big focus right now is open innovation. Um, and then Section 12J, I mean, yes, as much as it has been progressing, there are still some gray areas. So there are lots of areas that we're working with, um, the, with SARS and the National Treasury around saying, guys, how do we ensure that this is an outfit that's very attractive and it actually has those incentives for people to invest in venture capital? And then continuous engagement. So Simodisa, I mean, we're a bunch of dynamic entrepreneurs. Um, we have opportunities and we have great platforms. So we're part of the World Economic Forum. Um, the policies that we write in South Africa, the policies that we are pushing, we have the ability to push it within the World Economic Forum. Um, and then also we are part of the G20 Youth Entrepreneurship Alliance. So on a global platform, we're constantly pushing what we're doing in, um, in South Africa for entrepreneurs. We're trying to get international best practices of how do we empower. And also we have a, lot, a good story to tell. As, as, as a country. So how do we sell the entrepreneurial activity that's happening in South Africa? And then we have various reports, the top 25 constraints, unlocking the potential of SA tech uh, innovation, uh, innovators. And then we go into a couple of good partnerships um, in terms of the research work that we do because we are on the ground. We are the people running around. We are the people that entrepreneurs come to. We are the people that are entrepreneurs. So when uh, organizations like the World Bank saying, 
we need to start talking around innovation in South Africa. We would like to profile you as an organization. We would like for you to do a piece of research around how, as an organization, you're harnessing innovation. It's very, very good for the country. It's very, very good for entrepreneurship. And then also the Startup Genome Global Startup Ranking Report. So this is like a graphical representation of our white paper. It's something that you can download from our website. And then also the top 25 constraints. Um, it's very interesting. If you want to know what are the challenges in, in South Africa for entrepreneurs, it was a very comprehensive report around that. Um, and then this is um, our participation at the Davos conference last year. Um, and then Venture Central. Michael, I need you. <laughs> so basically, I'll show you a little clip of Venture Central. But this is the one-stop shop for entrepreneurs. It's going to be launched in the next coming weeks. And with all the work that we're doing, um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are, whether it's me privately, Matsi, I need help on this and that, or whether it's an office that gets numerous calls from entrepreneurs saying, I need mentorship, I need funding, I need this, I need that. Well, we've created what you call Venture Central, which is a one-stop shop, a central point where all the opportunities for entrepreneurs exist. And the good thing is that we are not going to recreate any content. There's things are already there. It's just how do you find them? And we've been able to create one platform where we've been able to organize all of this information. And as, as, as um, we as Simodisa are not going to create any other content, the people that are incubating, accelerating, funding entrepreneurs need to see this platform as how do we empower entrepreneurs. If I have an incubation opportunity, uh, basically that's where everybody will be posting everything that they have um, to offer entrepreneurs. So I'll play a little, little um, clip. Venture Central will be launching it in the next coming weeks. And why Venture Central was important is that if you are in Guagua, which is where I'm from, in the Free State, uh, are you from Guagua? <laughs> High five. <laughs> she then woke up when I said that. <laughs> so I'm from Guagua, which is a rural town in the Free State. <laughs> and, and essentially, I, I live in Santon. But if you are anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, and you're looking for opportunities, it will all be there. You don't have to feel excluded. You don't have to feel like you don't have access to anything because now we have scaled what we are doing in you know, the, 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 the entrepreneurial hubs of South Africa. So Venture Central is a solution that we felt that it will be the golden thread that connects entrepreneurs to opportunities, information, and everything else that everybody has to offer. Um, go, we can go back to the slides. I have one more thing. One more slide to go. Great. So bringing it back home, um, when I saw that Exora is powering possibility, it does really talk to entrepreneurs. It does really talk to the, the, the ambition of any corporate is to empower things and to power things. And I could say that it's powering entrepreneurs. And I feel that as much as corporates feel that they are in their own silos, they're carrying on with their business, the, the bottom line is very, very important. There is opportunities for you to contribute. I had indicated earlier that if you're running a marketing division, if you are the HR specialist, if you are the digital specialist within your organization, there are entrepreneurs that could do with your skills. There are entrepreneurs that could do, do with your, your, your experience. And also, there are things called enterprise and supply development programs. Um, how do we start integrating SMEs into our own environment? How are we not scared of these crazy people walking around with ideas? And how do we ensure that they can find a home? 
Uh, well, now it is legislated. You know, triple BEE, enterprise and supply development, it does count towards your scorecard. But we feel that corporates need to see it beyond just a tick box exercise. They have to imbibe the spirit of entrepreneurship for entrepreneurs and also within your very own environments. Um, you know, finding leaner ways, simple ways, cost efficient ways of doing business is essentially what entrepreneurship is. And that's why we also believe in embracing open innovation, which is creating a corporate market for them by letting them find solutions for you, request for innovations, getting these entrepreneurs to come up with ideas that you've been struggling with. Um, there are startup weekends that you know some corporates fund. Essentially, startup weekend is you are it's well it's a hackathon as well. You're able to essentially say, I am Exaro, I have this problem, and there's 30 entrepreneurs in the room. How can you find a digital solution for this, and then whoever else, you know, whoever that comes up with the biggest idea or the brightest idea that's close to finding that solution is the, 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 the entrepreneur that will win. And essentially for them, it's you've come up with a great solution. Entrepreneurship is about solving a problem in society. So create those environments whereby you as a corporate, you understand that I'm struggling with this. I'm trying to find a leaner way of doing this. Throw it to entrepreneurs. Create a hackathon. Let them find those solutions. It's it's things that can be easily done by uh, organizations such as Simodisa or um, you know, Willem and, and, and Michael's organization. And also provide social capital through mentorship because you have the skills, you have the experience. There's what you call the national mentorship movement. And essentially it's working with corporates, going into corporate organizations saying, well, we want you to sign up as a mentor. And they have a group of entrepreneurs that are signing up and they basically match you given what your skills are and given what they're looking for. So they have a, a system that's able to match you. And you can spend however much time you have, whether it's once a month, whether it's a Skype call, or it's having a coffee once every two weeks, you can figure out how best you'd like to be able to mentor these entrepreneurs. And then support networks, associations, and entrepreneurial activity through your CSI and ED spend on the ground knowledge of what is happening. So working with organizations such as Simodisa would really, really help you to get a sense of what's happening on the ground. What are these organizations doing? And also, you don't have to necessarily contribute financially, but contribute your time. Come to our Startup Thursdays. Bring a bunch of women um, that you are empowering in your supply chain on the venture train because you're opening up the opportunities to get funding, to, get a, well, to participate in thought leadership. So there are many, many ways that corporates can actually be part of this robust entrepreneurial um, you know, environment, and it's important to understand that we all have a role to play. An ecosystem is a different players that have a role to play in building and supporting entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, um, I've done my 45 minutes of talking. Um, thank you very much for your time. And if you want to get in touch with us, these are the contact details. Thank you very much. I can. Yeah, okay. okay. She's open to taking a couple of questions. Yeah. So, any questions? Uh, um, how, how long has this program been active, and what successes have you guys had? Okay, so we were established in 2013. I joined the organisation in 2015, and since we started at Simodisa, I mean, when I started, it was a community of 800 entrepreneurs and now we are 7,000 plus um, you know, entrepreneurs, incubators, accelerators, and this is within less than 18 months of, or more or less 18 months of being there. Um, successes of Smodisa as an organization is our ability to get the right kind of minds in one room, and also the credibility to engage Minister Lee <coughs> Gordon, Trevor Manuel, and the various people within government and say, well, here is our policy recommendations, and subsequent to that, like I had indicated earlier on, we were able to move to of the policies that we feel if this is sorted out in South Africa, it's going to shift the needle. That 27.1% of unemployment in South Africa is unacceptable, and we need to start taking entrepreneurship very, very seriously. As much as they're the cool guys working in the uh, coffee shops wearing slops and, and shorts, these are essentially the mavericks that are going to shift South Africa to where it should be. So community building, we've been able to establish a business, pushing policy, and also getting entrepreneurship to, to be something that people understand, getting entre entrepreneurship into township environments, um, and also being able to get the right kind of people in environments like these to tell them about 
why and how you can support entrepreneurship. So I would say those have been our successes. And for example, we have Sweep South. I don't know if any of you know of Sweep South, but Sweep South was, um, it's basically, um, it's an on-demand business that connects you to a domestic worker. So maybe your domestic worker can come to work today, she's sick or she, the child has to go to school. Um, you can go to Sweep South, they'll be able to connect you to, to, to a domestic worker. They've vetted the, 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 the domestic worker and she will come to your house and you know you'll pay her a rate through this um, this 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 app and platform. So Sweep South was essentially we gave them the launch pad because in 2014 we had our first big conference since we launched and basically they won our startup competition. I spoke about creating these hackathons where you throw problems to entrepreneurs. So Sweep South was the one business that we thought, well this idea is great. I mean they had only started for about six months and then they won this competition. And part of winning was exposure to Silicon Valley because our chairman lives there, um, and giving them exposure to um, accelerators, global accelerators. 500 startups is probably one of the greatest accelerators um, you know, on, on well, globally. And they were able to get a spot there, we facilitated all of that. And when they came back from Silicon Valley, they were able to access about 10 million rands worth of startup funding through our network of investors. So Steve South, um, I mean Aisha Pando and uh, her husband, Ellen, will tell you that Simonisa was critical to their success. And we continue to help them, continue to give them support. And any entrepreneur, we're not selfish with our networks. I mean, if you go to places like the World Economic Forum, the G20 platforms, we're selling our stories, we're selling these people. And if they want to come and say, we need X, Y, and Z, and we met somebody in Berlin, because that's where the G20 is happening, that's how we create that organic global connection. And you have a lot of um, um, industry buy-in or marketing? Industry buy-in, yes. I think um, people do take Simonisa seriously based on the fact that a lot of the people supporting Simonisa or part of Simonisa are industry experts. These are people that are running big banks. Um, I mean, one of our biggest uh, funder is FNB. You know, it's one of the great digital banks in South Africa, I'm not going to be an advert for <laughs> But they've been very supportive, it's been quite an entrepreneurial bank. Um, so, industry-wise, people do respect Simonisa. I mean, you have CEOs of companies, well, for example, the Technology Innovation Agency, quoting some of the work that we've done in our reports. So, this is stuff that people do take seriously in the industry. Yeah. You talked about Latin but you also mentioned that you have your own company. Sure. What does your company do? Okay, so my company is called Furaha Ethical Holdings, and we focus on industrial trading. And essentially, uh, we're in a joint partnership with Workforce, which is a listed company, and it's about how do you create training They have, uh, uh, you know, a uh, business process outsourcing and I've been able to help them leverage markets that they haven't been able to enter. So my focus is business development and then also advisory in the enterprise and development space. Since I left investment banking, um, you know, I've been in the space for about seven to eight years and I've been able to work with some of the corporates creating their corporate strategy around how do we integrate SMEs into our banking, how do we choose the right kind of entrepreneurs and SMEs that can actually procure from us because I'm literally on the ground, I work with entrepreneurs, we have a huge community of entrepreneurs so we're able to identify um, you know, the likely candidates that we'd be able to procure and we have the opportunity to support them. And then because I'm an entrepreneur, we have Furaha events and this is for us like a very easy cash flow business because um, being part of the World Economic Forum, companies would have um, sideline events. Um, whether it's in Rwanda, whether re recently it was in Durban. So I've had a corporate client, or mutual, that, um, that I've always, uh, my company has been creating these sideline events. So last week we hosted the All Mutual Chairman's um, session, basically Chair Emmanuel and a panel of um, great people on the continent, Dr. Ra uh, uh, Donald Kabaruka, who's the former president of the African Development Bank, was on the panel, Gloria Sorobe, we had Achaleke, who's the, uh, the principal senior guy at McKinsey Africa, and we also had Minister Rob Davies. So we are able to construct the whole concept and bring it to life and get the right people in, in the room. And so what I liked is that as much as it's a great conference, it's a bit of a talk shop, um, I walk away with a check in my hand because I had all each other as a, as a client that I did sideline events for. So that's basically what Furaha does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I really need you because oh. <laughs> the last 
May, I got tasked with drafting our ESG strategy. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the thing is, if we don't, so we know how much of money we need to spend because sure. our BE level is affected yeah. and we need to spend that sort of money to get to level three, otherwise this company is going to fight with us oh, and dear. that's another long story. So we have like a three year target. Okay. So we, we know how much money we need to spend, but for us in that group, it's how do we spend it, where, where do we spend it as effective, and yeah. the problem we have is we have to spend that money where our minds are located, so in areas like Lepula, like mm -hmm. Big Bang, South Bus. and the thing is how do you get, how do you get people in those communities to be sure. entrepreneurs, or they don't even have access to internet, so you can't send them like, you don't say, okay, use this app to get yourself to our ESP yeah. or something, because they don't have internet. So I think there's going to be a lot of collaboration okay. from outside and sustainability team. Brilliant. We do be very taken at ESP supply chain, mm -hmm. and supply chain with my, my as well. Should we do the last slide back? Um, yeah, I'm but details. Yeah, I think that's my So guys, let me just chime in here. So actually a large part of uh, this whole experience for you guys, yes, is to hear about amazing things and amazing people, but it also uh, is to kind of expand your own network. So it, until you heard Matsi talk, like maybe you wouldn't know how to get hold of her, right? But now also uh, you get hold of Matsi, but also uh, I'll give you a little, a quick story. Uh, Anglo-American searched the globe for a specific type of robotic technology and they, they didn't know where to find it. Like they looked the world over literally and after months they found a guy in Centurion who was doing it out of his garage and he's right there like you just think that how do you get, how do you get a garage the so if you have these types of issues that you don't know how to solve but there might be thousands of brilliant young minds in this country who are solving them how do you get hold of them? You speak to Matsi, or you speak to me, or you speak to anyone. We don't want to just keep giving away money. No, we don't. We're not. Be very yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. And it's like because not everyone is expecting a handout. It's like it's yeah, it's how you be. You have lots of money. Just give me the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, we want something back from you. This is not a hundred percent. You know, yeah. This is not a grant. So and then it's. For us as it, as sustainability, so, you know, we still have the SDGs, we have to follow the sustainability SDGs, you know, zero poverty, hunger, you know, what, water, climate change and stuff. So it's, okay, not only giving you the money, yes, but then being able to help you excellently in your business. So then it's like, we turn ESG into venture capital funds, yeah. but then does the government give us that benefit so we can pay these points? So I think, in terms of mining, what we want to try to do is redefine how we see ESG going forward and use that model for all other companies that want to. So I think that's for us starting on that journey. Okay, brilliant. Awesome. I'm happy to give you my card. Okay. Um, yeah. And She's on the Slack channel. She's on the Slack channel for as well. So that's why I said it. <laughs> 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 Um, how has the uh, South African private sector, se sector has received the um, request for innovation? Are you are you getting traction with regards to that, uh, or is it still in the early stages? How did you progress? It's still in the very early stages because the whole concept of open innovation is quite a new concept. Um, it's essentially how do you integrate entrepreneurs within your own environment, and also how do you become more entrepreneurial as an organisation? And I mean, Accenture is a big advocate of open innovation. Um, they have this annual, it's like a rankings of who are the most innovative um, you know, companies in South Africa that are able to actually integrate SMEs and entrepreneurs and also who are they, you know, who's also very digitally inclined and how they can be very um, intrapreneurial. So it's, it's something that has to basically be taken up. I mean, we've had um, you know, thought leadership dinners with the Department of Science and Technology CEOs from the top 14 listed companies at the JC, and we've spoken about this. So we also got entrepreneurs and technology entrepreneurs in that environment, and they will talk about, well, I haven't been able to get much traction within your company. <coughs> You as a CEO, you love the idea, you get excited about it, but in the middle, the, 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 the minute it gets to the middle manager, it dies, because they don't see it. So it's how do you create that culture of innovation within, within, within a corporate environment? And it's something that we're constantly promoting and advocating for. Yeah, so more activity will obviously mean more people will get a sense of what it is. Yeah. Can we take one more? Sure. Can you become the next minister of finance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Maybe as next minister of small businesses. <laughs> Sure, thank you very much everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.